Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and this week I'm going to continue working on trying to balance all of the environmental preferences and breeding requirements of the various species and I've already been doing a bit of work on that this week um, but it's mostly just been planning so there wasn't particularly much to show you but I should hopefully have a few more exciting things to show you today and I'm going to get started with that now. First up today, I've been planning out all of the environmental preferences and breeding requirements for all of the forest plants, and I'm just about to implement these settings into the game now. Just been going through a lot of the entity files for the forest trees and plants, and adding in all of these environmental requirements, uh, but now I'm just going to go to the shop quickly and get some breakfast. It is three o'clock and all day so far today I've just been going through the forest uh, species and creating all of the settings for them and doing all of the environmental requirements and trying to balance them and it's going pretty well. It does take a while, all the testing and the balancing just takes time but it's going fairly well and uh, I'm going to take a bit of a break from it now and I'm going to make some models. I've just finished creating a few new plant models for Aquilinox as you can see here. So there's this new button mushroom and I've also created the younger version for that. There's also this giant cactus which will obviously go in the desert and then there's this turnip plant which the boars will eat. And I've already added the mushroom into the game as you can see here. And also this afternoon I've been trying to come up with some sort of graph or diagram that I can use to work out which plants can live together with other plants. Uh, for when I'm planning out all of the environmental requirements just to try and make it a bit easier and I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do this yet or how this diagram works but I think I'm getting somewhere and I think I might be able to use this uh, tomorrow if I do a bit more work on it but for now I need to stop because this evening I'm going out with some friends to some sort of music thing in a park I'm not quite sure what it is but it's a lovely evening so it should be pretty nice Good morning everyone, it is Thursday morning, starting off a bit later today because I got to bed a bit later last night and um, this morning these graphs, these network things have just been driving me completely crazy. I'm sure that there's some way that I can use them to make it easier to uh, work out what requirements different species should have and how to balance them better but I just haven't quite worked out what that is yet. Um, I should quickly explain these graphs. Uh, so basically each of the dots represents a species or some of the dots represent environmental factors like high altitude or low altitude and then the blue arrows represent when one species requires something else so you can see that this tree for example requires a high altitude to live and then the red arrows uh, the red lines indicate when one species can't live with something else so for example the grass can't live with the stones and so I can construct these networks using all of the species from a certain biome and using their environmental requirements um, but I feel like there should be some way that I can come up with some sort of rules which would allow me to construct these networks first before I think of the requirements and construct them in a way that makes sure that each species has a balanced different variety of, of requirements and that higher tiered species have higher tiered requirements and there are no species that can't live in this biome because the requirements don't make sense. Um, but I just haven't worked out how I can do that yet. It's coming up to lunchtime now and for the rest of the morning I've just been adding the final few forest plants back into the game and doing their environmental preferences and settings. But um, 
I still feel like there should be a better way of doing this, a more logical way of actually calculating these requirements and balancing them. Um, but I still haven't worked out what that way is. I'm going to have a few more attempts at it later, but for now I need to make myself some lunch because I'll be going off to play tennis in a bit. Just finishing off for the afternoon now, and for the rest of the day I've just been having one final attempt at trying to find a better way of doing the requirements. And I was considering writing a program that could go through all the different combinations of requirements and find the best ones, but um, I don't think it's going to work out. So I'm, for now I'm just going to continue doing the requirements manually and just planning them out as best as I can. But what makes it so tricky is the way that the requirements kind of link together and form chains of dependencies. So even in this really simple example here with just a few species, the fern and the tree can't live together even though they don't have any direct requirements between them. And this is because the fern requires stones to grow, whereas the tree requires grass to grow, and the grass can't live with stones. So because of this, this kind of chain is created, and there's no way for the fern to live in the same area as the tree. And obviously with more species, these chains become a lot longer, and the number of combinations becomes a lot higher, and it just gets really tricky for me to plan out these requirements and really work out what effects those requirements are going to have on these chains and how exactly it's going to affect which species can live together with which other species. It is Friday morning now, just having a bit of breakfast, some banana muffins that I made yesterday, and I'm going to be getting started with work in a minute. First up today, I've just been doing some more planning, planning out the requirements for the plants that live in the grassland biome, and uh, I've pretty much finished that now. But I'm going to do something else now, I'm going to do something a bit more exciting because I know this doesn't really make for a very exciting video. So I'm going to do some UI work next. Just quickly before I start work on the UI stuff, I just wanted to add in some more categories for trees, uh, because previously there was just one category for all trees and so I've now added some more categories for all the different types of trees. So you might remember that last week I made the inventory redundant and I have now removed that from the toolbar up here and in its place I've added a new tab which is basically going to be a help tab it's just going to contain some information and explanations about how you can do certain things in the game, uh, just so that you can look it up if you get stuck on anything or you're not sure how to do something. So I'm going to be implementing this this afternoon, but I'm just going to quickly have my usual lunchtime salad now. It is coming up to 4 o'clock and I've been making some good progress on this new UI. So you can see that it now displays lots of information about a certain topic in the game and um, these are going to be images, these white blocks. So it's almost finished now, I've just got to get the images showing, um, I've got to get the height calculated properly so that the scroll bar stops scrolling when it gets to the bottom of the text and I've also got to get the tabs displaying the correct name for the section. I finished work on the new help UI now and I've set up a couple of examples so that you can see how this will look. Um, I'm not going to fill in all of the content now, I'll do that just before release to make sure that all of the images and text are up to date, um, just in case anything changes between now and then. But yeah, this is all now pretty much finished. So I'm going to take a bit of a break from the programming now and do some more modelling. It is almost 6 o'clock now, and as you can see, I've finished off making the models for the younger versions of these two new plants that I'm going to be adding into the game. And now I'm going to have some dinner, and then later I'll probably do some editing for this week's devlog video. It is coming up to 11 o'clock in the evening now, and this evening I've just been doing a bit of editing for this devlog video, and I also went through a few emails and comments. But now I'm going to get to bed. So that is pretty much going to be it for this week, sorry that the video is a bit shorter than usual. Uh, next week I'll try and mix things up a bit more so that I have a few different tasks to show you as well, and it's not all just planning and environmental settings because I know that's not particularly exciting to watch. 
Um, but yeah, that's it for this week. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.